So this here is the MSI GeForce RTX 3070 Ventus 2X uh, you know, graphics card, basically. So um, this is the card that I bought for myself for my main rig um, that I use for gaming on a daily basis and for my work, which is video game design as well. And it's been working really well. Um, it's pretty powerful. It, uh, you know, especially at HD gaming, it does very well. There's pretty much nothing that it doesn't max out at above like 100 FPS. Um, you know, especially not fast paced esports kind of games. And, you know, it's quite a beast of a card. It's quite a unit. Um, it's not massive compared to, you know, the new 4080s, 4090s, 3090s that you get, um, even those 6900 XT, 6800 XTs. Um, it's a two, two fan, um, two slot card that has two eight pin power, uh, eight pin power requirements over there. And it pulls about 220 watts. Um, so it's not the most power hungry, but it, it still is quite a lot of power that it pulls. And yeah, it's just, you know, for mid range, you know, upper mid range, HD to 2K, some titles, 4K, high refresh rate gaming, this card is perfect. And a lot of people will argue that you need to have the newest and the best graphics cards to really achieve some of the best results but this card proves that that's not true um, these days this isn't the most powerful card anymore but you know from these tests I think you'll see that it still has a lot to offer and if you are looking at getting into gaming and you want a decent result at all games really I would consider something like this so let's get into benchmarking the 3070 Ventus 2X uh, OC from MSI. Let's do it. Okay, so getting into uh, the benchmark for Horizon Zero Dawn here. And um, yeah, this, this game is uh, quite a beautiful game. Um, it looks fantastic. It's got a lot of uh, visual aesthetic to it and um, a lot going on. And it's one of those games that I think was a PlayStation exclusive as well. And, you know, it just, it's a, it's a pretty game. It looks good. Um, it feels good. And uh, it's, it's, it just, it looks crisp and on point. So in terms of the visuals, it's, uh, it's one of those, you know, uh, top tier games. Um, looking at the uh, CPU temperature there getting around 70 degrees Celsius, using around 80 to 100 percent of the CPU, using around seven gigs of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, uh, VRAM. So that's a lot. Um, games don't usually use that much, um, but it is good to see some games make use of that um, memory capacity there. Um, CPUs are around 60 degrees Celsius, uh, not really being used much according to the test, only about under 10%, and um, it's pulling around 75 watts. Um, using around 30 gigs of RAM and getting around, you know, 120 to 150 FPS. So, yeah, uh, this is running at HD, and it's a really good result for high refresh rate gaming, uh, maxed out graphics, and, you know, just... Uh, the experience that I believe was intended. Um, this case is perforated at the front, so the airflow is quite good. It has fans, uh, you know, blowing in intake fans at the front here. Goes out the back, comes out the top through the uh, AIO as well, and um, that's why the temperatures are pretty good. GPU's at 75 now. It's not amazing, but you know, it's not bad at all. And um, yeah, not being maxed out, but running at almost capacity. So um, I feel like it's a good test. So with a game like this, you can expect to get anywhere between, you know, above 100 FPS uh, at, 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 at HD. Um, but even in, um, you know, uh, 4K or um, 
2K even, you should be able to get quite a good result. Uh, probably around 100 um, for 4K. Uh, maybe a little bit lower, maybe around 80. But overall, a uh, really good result. Average of pre is 123. Maximum 209, minimum 42. Um, and everything's at uh, ultimate, running at HD. And uh, yeah, pretty good result. Um, let's move on to the next test. Okay, so here we are in um, Days Gone. And uh, this is one of those games that I, you know, always wanted to play but never got around to and um, just kind of forgot about. But then I got it on sale and wow, I've got to say it's just, it's an amazing game. It's a beautiful game. It's a lot of fun. And it's just one of those things that I wish I had purchased sooner. Um, I really enjoy this one and uh, I can't wait to finish it as well. So. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's it's a beautiful game. It's um, it's got very crisp visuals. It's got a lot of environmental details. The foliage looks amazing. Oh, someone shooting. And yeah, I just think it's a it's a beautiful game. It's uh, it looks amazing in my opinion. Um, let me let me. Let me get into some combat and uh, we can check the performance. Okay, these guys are shooting at me already. Okay, got him. I think that I think it might have just been him. So you can see the performance is really good. It's getting around 180 uh, frames right now. And this game just looks amazing. Um, you know, the character details are really good. Um, the effects are really good. Look at the hair, look at the water. Everything is just, it's so crisp and, uh, and detailed. And um, yeah, this is a game that I really enjoy playing. It's a game that I enjoy looking at. And uh, it's one of those ones that's, you know, just an inspiration to see because it's, it's just so well made. I mean, look at the background there, look at the LODs and yeah, it's a beautiful game um, and it runs quite well. So it's getting around, it's jumping a little bit all over the place, but it's getting around 100 to 200 frames, never really below 130. Um, GPUs ramping up to about 80 degrees, um, GPUs being used 100%. Let me put this in a position where you can see it well. Um, using around five gigs of video uh, memory there, that's 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 not too much uh, for an eight gig card, but it's not nothing. It's quite a lot. Um, CPUs are around seventy degrees there. Not using the CPU much in terms of uh, utilization. Pulling around seventy five watts. Using around fifteen gigs of RAM, um, which is a lot. And yeah, just getting getting in that sweet spot of um, you know a hundred and 40 fps more or less uh most of the time it's above that so i'm gonna the, the average is probably around like 160 um but it really depends on what you're doing and uh yeah uh, like i said i have this is my first time playing this game not right now i just mean overall and uh yeah i'm really impressed i think it's an amazing looking game and i i think uh i think i'm gonna enjoy finishing this so that's it for this one. Really good result. Let's move on to the next one. All right, getting into this next benchmark here, and this game is called Strange Brigade. Uh, this is also one of those games that I recently purchased and tried for the first time, and it's a lot of fun uh, if you play it with friends. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. Um, yeah, right off the bat, really good result. Uh, this one was never in doubt because it's not the most demanding game, but it does look really nice. Um, honestly, it's up there with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider for me in terms of visuals. It's really crisp and detailed and really good color, um, you know, reproduction, color profiles in the game. And yeah, in terms of um, performance, it's it's getting above 200 FPS there. 
uh, running on Vulkan, of course, not DirectX right now, but uh, yeah, it's a good, really good result. Um, GPUs at around 76 degrees Celsius, uh, using around 5 gigs of RAM, 5% CPU, and about 10 gigs of, uh, you know, normal RAM. The average uh, FPS is 245, so really good result. Uh, really short benchmark, I just wanted to include it, and uh, yeah, excellent, uh, excellent result. Not a very difficult game to run, but really nice looking game. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Alright, so getting into the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And um, this is the remastered version that came out recently. Um, as you can see, I only recently started again. And this is running at uh, HD maxed out. No ray tracing, but no um, DLSS or FSR. So this is just native. And that's supported with my tests. I always do native um, because I want to see how close to a pure uh, benchmark I can get. And, you know, when we get to um, 2K or 4K tests, I might enable FSR and DLSS. But when it's not necessary for HD, there's no reason to do it when you're getting above 60 frames. So, yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Um, this update is amazing in terms of visuals. It looks really crisp, really colorful. Um, the foliage looks so good. And uh, yeah, it just looks really nice. Um, getting around 100 FPS for the most part. And uh, yeah, getting around 76 degrees Celsius on the GPU. Uh, around 80 to 90 percent GPU utilization. Using around 4 gigs of video memory there. Uh, CPU is at 66 degrees Celsius, uh, pulling around 75 watts. So that's that's standard. It keeps pulling around 75 watts. Um, you know, that's pretty much what it's set to do. Um, using around 12 gigs of RAM and getting around 100 FPS. So, yeah, in terms of what you get visually for the results, I think it's pretty good. Um, and uh, it looks really nice. Uh, could do with a little bit more anti-aliasing, but apart from that, it looks really good. And, um, yeah, I think it's a good result. This game is visually packed, you know, there's so much going on. Um, and so, you won't always get the best result, especially after the recent uh, visual update. Getting around 70 FPS now in this little town. But keep in mind, this is a pure test. Uh, no DLS, there's no FSR, no upscaling of any kind, and uh, the resolution is set to native uh, HD. So, quite a good result. Um, really good looking game. I don't know what is happening right now, but um, yeah, uh, I think it's a good it's a good result. So let's move on to the next one here. All right, getting into the uh, Counter Strike benchmark here. Unfortunately for this one, my overlay never seems to work, and so I won't be able to show the usual metrics, but we do have the little FPS there. I know you can't see it, but I'm just going to update you. So right now it's at 293. Seems to be static for some reason. And, um, yeah, I don't know, it's not updating from 293, it's at basically 300. Um, so, I guess that's pretty much wow. what it's going to be. Yeah, I'll share the bonuses. Not the bonus, but this one. Let me uh, turn the volume down a little bit. Um, I'm not sure why it's not updating. Um, it might have just taken a snapshot at the beginning of the game, but I mean, 300 is a good result anyway. Um, I'm going to play one more round and uh, let's just see how it feels. I don't play this game ever, I just play it for tests. So, yeah, uh, I'm not going to. 
do very well. Yeah, it hasn't updated, it's still at basically 300, so I guess that's just a snapshot of what it was when we launched, but it does feel extremely smooth, and there's no reason to think that it wouldn't be at 300, but then again, you can run this game on a digital potato, so not really, uh, not really worried about it. Extremely smooth, but I mean it is it is Counter Strike, so that's to be expected. Yeah. Anyway, uh, really good result, obviously around three hundred. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay, getting into the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark here, and uh, right off the bat, you can see it's running quite well at around one hundred and fifty <laughs> FPS there. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to get the right volume there. It's just the 10. And around 130 now. Um, I realized that the graphic, uh, the GPU power wasn't actually uh, showing previously, so I went back and just activated that so that we can see that as well. And it it's pulling a lot actually putting around 200 watts, um, which is a lot more than what I expected it to. Um, and, you know, between that and the GPU, it's at around 300. So I think a PC like this, this one has like an 850 watt gold rated power supply. So it's not like it's an issue, but it is a lot of power being pulled. And that's when, uh, that's when you need to, you know, decide between something like a 3070, 3080, you know, now 4080, 4090, is it really worth the performance for all that power usage? Um, and, you know, the points I'm making is, this looks fantastic and it runs fantastically. It's at about 150 most of the time. GPU's at around 77 degrees. Uh, pulls around six and a half gigs of VRAM there on the graphics card. Um, CPU's at around 66 degrees and around 11 gigs of RAM. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm noticing the theme with these games. Um, they all have very similar patterns when it comes to uh, performance and um, memory usage, RAM usage. And I think that's a good thing because they all look kind of similar now too because they all look fantastic. I mean, this game looks very crisp as well um, and so much going on. Um, and it's a really good result, um, you know. You might not necessarily buy a 3070 for HD gaming, perhaps you want it for 2K gaming or maybe even 4K gaming, but you know, um, for just normal HD gaming, native gaming without any sort of DLSS or FSR, it's, it, it's suited really well. Um, and I'm a big fan of upscaling technology, but I do think there's something to be said for just native gaming as well. And that's why I run my tests natively because you know, upscaling doesn't really represent the true power of a card. It's more of a, um, it's more of a cop out, uh, and it has its place. But this is native, and natively, you can play high refresh rate Tomb Raider if you want to. Uh, it's a really good result, um, and let's see the average. So. An average of 143 FPS there, and that is sweet spot uh, HD high refresh rate gaming. So, really good result. Uh, let's uh, move on to the next one. All right, getting into the uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark here. This is again running at HD, maximum uh, graphics, maximum settings, ultra quality, whatever, everything maxed out. Um, Native HD, no DLSS, no upscaling, um, 
and getting around 70 in that little scene there, um, 70 FPS. Let's see what it gets. Uh, getting around 90 here. Um, to be honest, I thought it would get a little bit higher, but it's not a bad result, getting around 90. And this isn't a game that you would play, um, you know, uh, high refresh rate anyway, because it's not really that kind of shooter. This is more of a cinematic game and you would prioritize quality over performance for the most part, you know, assuming that you're getting like above 60 at least. Um, it's a beautiful game and it's not a bad result at all. Um, GPUs are around 70 degrees, uh, 220 watts of power being used there, and then using around five gigs of, uh, of VRAM there, that's quite a lot for an older game like this. Um, CPUs are around 65 degrees. Uh, we have this AIO keeping it cool at the top here. Pulling around 70 watts of power. Um, using around 13 gigs of RAM, that's quite a lot. Um, I think that's a testament that you need at least, you know, above, uh, you know, you would say above 8 gigs, but let's be honest, you need 16 gigs of RAM these days. And um, yeah, it seems to be around that 80 FPS spot for the most part um not a bad result um this is maxed out natively and that's always going to be a little bit tougher to do um so it's not a bad result at all and it looks nice um yeah like i said this is more of a cinematic game so it's uh you don't need to have over 100 frames although it's always good to have but this game also doesn't have all of the technology that the newer ones does um so, you know, it's not always going to run the best, but yeah, I don't think it's a bad result at all. Um, seems to be around 70 to 90 for the most part. And this is obviously what it looks like when you play and it's a good representation of the kind of frame rate you would get while playing. Um, yeah, um, pulling quite a lot of power there. Uh, like I said previously, 220 watts is quite a lot for a graphics card, especially when it's not something like you know, a uh, top tier graphics card. This is more of a upper mid spec kind of graphics card. Um, but yeah, it's a good performance. Um, it's not the highest frame rate, but it's very stable. Uh, not really dropping much below. It doesn't really matter what's happening. It doesn't really go below that, you know, 85 uh, FPS mark. We'll see what happens when the explosions and things happen just now. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's done quite well. I haven't really seen a drop below the 80. Um, and in terms of temperatures, everything is keeping stable. Um, graphics card and CPU seem to just be at the ranges they are at and they're just staying there. So the graphics card again is at 77 and the CPU is at 66. Um, graphics card is being used pretty much all the way, 99% um, utilization. And as for the CPU, reporting that it's not really being used at all but I, I do think there might be some error with that reporting because it's you know it's not like it's it's a 5700x it's you know again upper mid spec sort of CPU um, we saw the explosion there frame rate kept pretty stable went to 78 for a second so you know this is a good result in terms of stability the 1% lows would be quite good and yeah just overall a really good result um, not exactly high refresh rate gaming, but um, it is, you know, uh, better than a console experience in terms of the FPS. Um, so, good result, good graphics, looks nice, better than all the game. Uh, yeah, really good result. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. For our last test here, getting into the Hitman 1. Uh, benchmark and uh, this is running at HD maxed out um, of course and uh, seems to be getting it's jumping a little bit but seems to be getting from 80 to like 110 FPS 160 now um, so it's a very big range um, you know again 68 degrees on this on the GPU there the GPU isn't being maxed out in this game only using about you know 40 to 70 percent of its power um, pulling again around 220 watts uh, using again around five gigs of video memory so 
yeah, you know, when you have 8 gigs of video memory, games do tend to use a lot. Um, 63 degrees on the CPU, only using around 4% of the CPU's power. Uh, pulling around 75 watts and um, using around just under 11 gigs of RAM. Um, for the most part, getting above 100 FPS right now at like 150. Um, and, you know, uh, this game is a little bit older now, but it's still beautiful. It looks really nice. And, um, you know, whether you're playing at HD, 2K or 4K, it's, uh, it's a really good looking game. It's crisp. It's got a lot of detail, a lot of color. And, uh, yeah, I think it looks nice. Um, getting around a really high refresh rate uh, gaming at the moment, you know, high FPS. Um, but it does drop uh, depending on where you are, so it's not really uniform. But yeah, it's uh, for the most part it's it's doing quite well. Probably at around like hundred and forty something average. So really good result. And uh, yeah, that's it for the for the benching. Let's uh, let's talk about it. So there you have it for the um, MSI. 37 Ventus 2X OC low hash rates. <laughs> it's quite a long name card from um, from MSI there. And um, as you saw, we tested these specific tests at HD, and it it did really well. Um, I think if you take an overall average, it's easily above 100 frames per second. Pretty close to that 144 mark for most games at HD. Um, and this is of course maxed out native gaming um as i mentioned a couple times in the benchmark i don't do uh fsr or uh, dlss tests uh, just because i want the tests to be native to whatever hardware i'm testing and uh, that's just to get the most pure result um you know uh, there's a lot to be said about upscaling technology and it has its place but for me i try to test without those kinds of things and just get a pure um, you know, uh, just a native result, and uh, that's what we did here. So, in most of the games, it did really well. Um, I was especially impressed by um, Days Gone and um, Horizon Zero Dawn, and even Tomb Raider, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I was a little bit uh, disappointed in the um, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 result. I was a little bit low, didn't really go above 100 much. Um, but overall, it did really well. Um, you know, in esports games like Counter Strike, you're going to get like 300 to 400 FPS, and in cinematic games like Days Gone, you you will reach that 100 and 144 mark. Which, if you have a high refresh rate monitor, that's going to serve you well. So, not going to keep, not going to take you, uh, you know, not going to keep you for too long. Uh, I would definitely recommend this card if you want to get into um, I don't know what to call it. It's not budget, but it's not high-end gaming. It's uh, upper-middle uh, spec gaming. So if that's what you're interested, I would go for something like this. It's a good card, um, and it will serve you well. There's a lot of variety in these as well, and I know that they are bringing out a new uh, 3070 Ti that has 16 gigs of RAM as well. If the pricing on that is good, that would be something to consider instead of this. So, yeah, keep that in mind and um, definitely recommend it. Yeah. So, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. And uh, remember to subscribe, like, all of that good stuff. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.